Have you ever been spiritually crippled by malfunctioning devices? Are you tired of trying to explain to Great Aunt Doris what YouTube is? Are you tired of your camera resolution looking like a VHS recording? Well, our next guest has your back. It is with great pleasure that I introduce a good friend of mine, a technology champion, karaoke connoisseur, master of the microphone settings, TikTok teacher, and host of Lazy Tech Tony on YouTube, or Lazy Tech TV on YouTube, Lazy Tech Tony. Welcome in, buddy. Thank you very much, man. Thanks for having me. All right. So, Tony, I know this is the second time we're doing this. And again, I thank you for uh, for, for entertaining me a second time. But uh, I definitely wanted to highlight you. Um, I think uh, I've been following you now for well over, what, a year and a half, two years now. Uh, I think About. you have done a great job uh, with your community. Um, you know, our communities in, in general, you're, you're, you're very supportive of everybody. Um, your will and want to teach people, I find... Um, it's humbling and heartwarming. I don't think that there is enough people um, who are willing to take that time out of their day to try and improve the lives of others. Um, you know, whether it be technology, healthcare, uh, any aspect, like, you know, if you're, if you're the best unicycler and you want to take time out of your life to teach someone else how to unicycle, that's fucking awesome. And I think what you do, right. Tony, um, you know, between your, your, your tech TikToks, just teaching people how to stream in general, you know, etiquette, simple settings that you can change to, you know, again, from the difference from VHS quality to, you know, looking like a professional studio. Um, and I think yeah. that's important, especially with um, the way that I think the future of content creation um is growing at a faster rate than any of us could probably have imagined you know whether oh, it be yeah. 10 years ago 15 years ago um you know there was a time where i was watching twitch like it was tv um you know TikTok. how, how you know how many videos a day are you scrolling through because i probably go through about 100 to 200 still can't find yeah, time to do what i need to do but let's not focus on that whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but no, I definitely think it is, uh, worthwhile, uh, to highlight you, sir, because I think what you do for the community is, uh, absolutely, um, what would be the best word? It, it is not only a need of people, but like I said, the fact that you can take time out of your day to better the lives of others, I think is, uh, it is something that I would like to applaud because I think that is something that is sorely missed in our world. So now that I'm done, you know, uh, expanding your head a little bit and your ego, uh, <laughs> just a bit, <laughs> just a bit, just a bit. No, I, I really appreciate you, Tony. Like I said, there's, there's very few people and I've met a lot of people that take the time to help other people. And I think that that is, uh, a talent. Man, where, where were you when I was single? Right. I needed that kind of wingman energy going yeah. out to the bar and be like, Hi, I'm Tony. Here's here's Dana, and he's going to tell you all about me while I just stand here smoldering. Let me <laughs> let me tell you about the TikTok teacher named Tony. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, but that's it. And I think uh, and I think as, just as a society, we need to do a better job lifting ourselves up as opposed to, uh, you know, tr trying to supplant our, our, our fellow human. But uh, let's talk about Tony, the the career man um the businessman the tech man so like i said i know you work um you're a contractor and and this will be something that i'll just tell our viewers um i don't want to put you in a position if you don't want to say who you work for what you do that's fine uh, i prefer not to be killed by an assassin so you know sure. what, whatever you can tell me without uh, going into too much i'll tell that, the assassin to hold just hold that's the don't kind of power yet. that tony has but uh, yeah. like I said, also, it's a very expensive plane ticket that I would have to pay for this assassin to come meet you. So it's just, it's just not really my purview right now. Nobody I don't have that. the uh, PO for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. No, it's not a great time to come to Canada anyways. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> all right, Tony, in all seriousness. So tell us what you do, summarize kind of what you do uh, in your professional life. And, uh, and yeah, we'll sure. go from there. Yeah. So, um, as you said, I, I am a contractor and the nice thing about being a contractor is that we have many different clients, um, under their purview from very, very large businesses that are 
multi uh, national um, to even tiny mom and pop shops that just want to use uh, the respective company for additional manpower. Uh, but as a contractor, I am lucky enough to um, to actually be the uh, Xbox master trainer here in the United States. And in essence, as a title goes, um, what that means is I effectively do a lot of the corporate training that all of your favorite brick and mortar and online retail stores have to take when they get their position. So if you were to work at a store like here in the, in the U S uh, like a Costco, for example, and you work in what's called the majors department where they sell the TVs and the, and the computers and all the electronics, um, you would watch some of our video content to train you on uh, our products is, and our products and our services and, and, and whatnot. And um, it has been a very interesting journey because uh, as working with this particular company, I was one of those individuals that were going directly in to the store and meeting the employees like face to face and giving them face to face trainings. But I always, I always strive to figure out how to get the job of the trainer that, that trains me. How do I get the guy that trains me? I like him. I don't want him to not have a job, but at the same time, I want his job. And so when it came down to it, um, long story short, the position became available. I applied for it. Everyone told me I was going to get it and I did not get it. And then I moved here to Utah and I was still jobless. And then the stars aligned, a phone call came in. And then by the time that we moved into this uh, townhouse that we're in right now, I was able to get the job. So nice. it was a very interesting roller coaster of emotions, but kind of similar to, to you with your other previous jobs, uh, you kept the pro professionalism. So yeah. as much as I was like, this is my job, like, why are you giving it to this other person? I, I never burned any bridges. I left my position at the time with an applause, with a with a, a high five, good luck, yeah. and a bunch of, I, we will miss yous. I wish we could find a position for you, but there's just not a position uh, in Utah right now. Um, and so I was like, all right, well, I will put you guys on my resume and hopefully we'll cross paths again. But I, I never, I never felt bad or felt anger or ill will toward the, the hiring team. I know that they had their own reasons and whatnot of going for the, the initial person, but that's not my business, right? Like I, th there's no reason to, to rest on those laurels. So I just moved on as best as I could. And so, yeah, it's been a very interesting road since then. And and my main thing when, uh, with the master trainer position is we create training content. So it's primarily video content. So I'm extremely versed in that. There are some live trainings that we do remotely over Microsoft Teams or like BlueJeans or even Zoom from time to time. And um, we just do kind of like the, the run-of-the-mill PowerPoint presentations but the nice thing about my team is that it's actually run by theater kids. Really? Like we're all nerds. We're we're all like I I was an improv. A lot of them were improv. One of them grew up in Vegas. Like they oh. they they did improv in Vegas, right? So they have that kind of crowd work mentality that, hey, this is going to be a very boring conversation about the percent sign and where it came from, but we're going to make this fun. Check out my puppet. And it's like, <laughs> okay, when did we bring puppets into this conversation? But yeah, we, we there, there's no reason to spend an hour of drudgery if we can make it fun literally for everyone. So it is, it is a very different kind of corporate training. I'm very happy to, to do it, but with that, they they do see my skill set that I've cultivated on my own YouTube channel as well as on Twitch, and they're they're leaning into that a lot more than they have when they first hired me uh, into this position. So I'm doing a lot more back end stuff, whether it be um, not so much OBS stuff because we don't use OBS, but uh, we use another program called Streamyard uh, and how to 
how to use that and OBS if you want to, how to edit in Premiere Pro, how to use CapCut for quick and easy things. So th th it, there's a lot of benefits to what I've learned from being a Twitch or just, just a streamer or content creator in general that I can bring back to the table to the rest of my uh, staff and say, hey, this is something that works all across the board, whether you're corporate or not. Um, you and I were talking about different hooks that yeah. you want to use for like TikToks and stuff. We talk about that every single day. The only downside about the job, I will say, is that I, uh, it, I get jaded a little bit because a lot of the times when you see new cool things in tech, you're like, oh, that's so cool. Um, but with the, with the large company that Microsoft is and with, with all the new Xbox stuff that comes out, there, there's bound to be miss, misses, right? There's, there's definitely hits, but there's bound to be misses. And unfortunately, there's, there can be some misses. And sometimes it's our responsibility and sometimes it's not. And, but whatever, whosever responsibility it is, it does fall to us to kind of talk about it or at least be aware of it. Yeah. So some sometimes, especially like with the, this AI stuff that everybody's talking about, I'm very excited for. I'm 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 skeptically excited for it, right? <laughs> like I want it to do well, but I also don't want someone to lose their job over it just because Sora was able to create a 30 minute B roll video uh, of a of drone footage from scratch, and now we don't have to hire a drone guy, and he doesn't make you know, $3,000 for, for that drone session. I don't want to do that, but I do want to use Sora or these other uh, generative AI things for like stock footage of something that is almost impossible to create or hire somebody for $3,000. Like I, like we, we, we definitely work on a budget and we, you know, and, and we want to respect that budget. So having these other tools like Copilot and, and and Gemini Bard, all all these other things. Sora, it, it's very very exciting to see uh, where where that stuff's going. All right, and let me let me just build off that there because this was a conversation I was having with someone else, actually my wife. Um, your thought on AI taking jobs from artists is mm. that something? And, and both musically and, 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 and actual like painting and, and drawing art. Sure. Um, yeah. But that was one thing that I was questioning because, you know, for someone like me, it makes life pretty easy. But for someone who has, you know, mastered the pencil, um, you know, some of these and even some of these TikToks and pictures that you see, they're like pastel paintings, but they look like a real life lion. Like, right. And it's crazy because have we, do you, hey. I'll, 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 I'll try to pose this in a smarter way, but do you feel that we're giving AI the tools that it needs to supplant us? Um, no, no. Okay. I, I don't think so. Um, I do feel like there, there is a lot of, um, emotional fear mongering yeah. when it, when it uh, comes around with AI. And that happens with any kind of technology. I mean, just the the idea of having a computer back in when home computers weren't a thing. And then Steve Jobs said, hey, here's a home computer that you can put in every single home. Like there were obviously a lot of naysayers saying that this is going to take away these kinds of jobs. This is going to take away, um, you know, uh, resources that otherwise our department needs. Um Things of that nature, the evolution of where humans go, it's, it's always going to be scary, especially when it comes to effectively borrowing or taking somebody's art. And the worst thing is that it's being taken without asking. Well, and that's it. Right. Yeah. And, and that, that is, that's the definite, like, okay, we, we need those watchdog groups to keep open AI or Google or Facebook or whomever's running these um, LLMs, uh, large uh, language models, we need to police these guys enough to still be creative, but also if we're going to use Getty images, if we're going to use Taylor Swift's image, for example, that she freaking says, yeah, that's okay to do that because I'm in support of whatever this is. But if she doesn't, 
then we need to hold whomever put that on there, hold them accountable. Yeah. Um, but the problem is right now, there's not enough lit, um, litigation. There's not enough. There's no laws against it right now. Not like s set in stone. It's very much like, well, if you take this law from 1952 yeah. and, and, and twist the words a little bit, we could make it an AI law. Like, no, we have to just make a new legislation saying blah, saying this. I mean, Mark, Mark has Brownlee actually um, recently, he was featured in this AI um, chat bot where you could actually chat with Marquez Brownlee. And for those of you watching or listening, Marquez Brownlee is MKBHD on YouTube. He's an extremely big YouTuber. He's the top tech YouTuber. He's the one that everyone wants to kind of be, uh, be or meet. Um, and Marquez uh, and this chat bot said, yeah, you can chat with Joe Rogan. You can chat with Marquez Brownlee. You can chat with one of the, one of the uh, Kardashian sisters. And it seems like all of these people are supporting it in, Marquez Brownlee even asked the chatbot, hey, did you get Marquez Brownlee's permission to be Marquez Brownlee's chatbot? And the chatbot said, yes, I did. And he's, and then Marquez Brownlee said, so are you the real Marquez Brownlee? Yes, I am the real Marquez Brownlee. And so MKBHD was like, all right, this is BS. I never signed off on this. I never gave anybody my, my okay to do yeah. this. So finally, the company... Uh, I don't know if he did any kind of cease and desist. I don't know if he went down that loophole uh, or not loophole, but down, went down that road, but he at least put it on Twitter. He put it on X and it blew up as, uh, as, as you think it would. And um, the company who made this chat bot swiftly removed his chat bot, uh, but then also changed the category so instead of you being able to chat with your favorite YouTuber, you can chat with your favorite YouTuber's number one fan. That's how the chatbot company is now getting Side getting around it. it. Yeah. But yeah, but but on the website is still like the official like profile photo of Joe Rogan or the official profile photo of the girl from Call Me um, Call Me Daddy yeah. uh, podcast. You know, so like if they're cool with it, fine get at get after it but it's it's definitely we we are in a very precarious um moment right now where there there there's going to be a lot of um unwarranted uh stealing and sometimes you're not even going to know like look at this cute little teddy bear how am i supposed to know that's a beanie baby i don't know what, what the hell a beanie baby from 1972 is yeah how am i supposed to know that i just told chat gpt or dolly f 4 to make me a thing and it put a beanie bit like it's, that's not my fault like okay so whose fault is it and so that's i mean that's stuff way above my head but yeah. still have being able to have these conversations respectful conversations thoughtful but not like emotional if we could if the powers that be can actually do that then great that's that's the that's the road that i would like to go down um, and I've had these conversations with my wife because she's vehemently against what AI is doing because she is a creator herself. She yeah. makes her own clothing. She's painted. She's done all these things. And the last thing that she wants to see is someone take one of her works and use generative AI to improve it without her permission. Yeah. And I don't blame her. I don't blame her at all. But at the same time, the other night, she used AI to figure out what to cook for dinner. So I'm like, okay, there's obviously parts of AI, just like in anything else. There's parts of it where you can, you can be okay with it because it's not necessarily stealing. It's just more kind of uh, aggregating um, already opened ideas. Yeah. It's a good legal but if it were, for it. <laughs> but it, yeah, but if if I were to come back and say, check out this the, this this uh, homemade mac and cheese uh, dish that I created, and you're like, this is this is the best mac and cheese that I've I've ever had. Like, um, well, guess what? I used AI to do it, and then if I were to dig a little farther, it could be that AI just copy pasted Gordon Ramsay's best mac and cheese dish. And I, but I. I wouldn't know unless the AI does the source, you know, uh, the, the, um, does the, uh, not sourcing, but um, uh, 
Yeah, g- gives, notes, gives credit. Think, yeah, yeah. Source notes, yeah, yeah, gives credit. The nice thing, and I will say this about Copilot and Bing Chat, uh, the nice thing about Bing Chat is that it does give the the credit. It gives you the footnotes of this is these are all the four or five different websites that we pulled this information to give you this uh, in, to give you this recipe for this dish. That's the nice thing. But other AI chatbots don't always do that. So you're you're under the guise of all right, I'm just going to copy paste, and this is my creation, and you, you you don't know if that's necessarily true. So I don't know. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think Phil DeFranco on, on YouTube said it said it best. This is the worst that AI is going to be moving yeah. forward. It is going to get better. It is going to get, um, and the government already, just like crypto, the government is starting to, um get their dirty, dirty little grubby hands on AI. And they're, they're trying to figure out how to regulate. They're sure they're trying to figure out how to tax it as well too, but that's a different conversation. Um, but even with that being said, there are, there are movements that are happening in favor of AI, but also in favor of protecting the public's um, best interests. And, 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 you know, I'm, I'm glad that's a conversation, right? We don't, uh, and I think that's one thing. And like you said, the fear mongering brings you to, you know, if, there, if there's one thing that has always sold throughout time, it's fear, right? So yeah. we, we, we always, yeah. it's an easy sell. And that's it. And we were talking about this uh, before I hit record here, but I, I live in a, I would say a, I live in a country town, but it, it hasn't, not everybody has made it past 1995 yet. So there's just, you know, there's stuff like that. But I think as as a whole, it is something that we do need to monitor because like I said, um, and even like you said, right, we might be getting a recipe off of ChatGPT, but what if ChatGPT is just ripping that from someone else? And right. we choose yeah. to be ignorant to that fact. So a lot of, I mean, we do that all the time. Right. And I think that's the problem with the Internet to a small degree is that we're, we're always concerned about, well, we're, we're, what are your sources? But um, most of us either get our news by just reading the headline or it's just the first 30 seconds of a tantalizing video that you see on TikTok. And that's your news. But it's not enough. And the nice thing about some of the news um I guess the, the news focused um, uh, podcasts and YouTube videos that I watch on a, on a weekly or daily basis, they always give their sources. So if I, if I, as a user and as a fan ever want to go back and it's like, well, where, where did so-and-so hear that? I can always go back and make sure that the source at least is a reputable source. It's not just Tony's favorite website, dot co dot UK dot slash uh, Russia. Like yeah, I, it's, right. you know, like I, I, as long as it's not something like that, then, then we're good. But there's been many a times that I've come across and I'm sure you have too, because you're, you're interested in cryptozoology and some of the, um, some, some of the uh, more uh, supernatural things. There's tons of things online where I saw and someone says it has been confirmed that blah, blah, blah. But if you click on their source, the confirmation is another website akin to the onion, which right. is a satire website. So it's like, okay, but you didn't dig enough. Like I commend you for doing a little bit of digging, but you need to dig just a little bit farther. Um, because now, now you're kind of in that bubble that makes you feel comfortable. And then all the info that you get from that bubble is going to be skewed. And so for me, being in the tech bubble, I have this air of technology being wonderful and exciting, and it's going to make our lives so much better. And I'm still waiting for the technology where I don't have to brush my teeth or floss. It just kind of happens. I'm still waiting for that, but (laughs) it hasn't come yet. Wake up like the Jetsons, that's it. Just get pulled out of your bed and ready to go. I have been lied to all my life. When is that? I mean, we have the moving sidewalks. Great. Where's my auto toothbrush where I can just like stand there like superman and just does it for me i i'm still waiting but still i digress the the um the the, there there's there's just a lot out there and um the accountability and responsibility does come back on the users but it also needs to be um with free speech and everything that's great but there there needs to be responsibility by some of the platforms 
that are supporting um, some some of this stuff. And we've seen it already. We've seen like like on Twitter or X, sorry, yeah. whatever you want to call it. They'll, they'll, they'll put the little note like, hey, this subject matter is about whatever. It might not be correct. So take whatever this poster is saying with a grain of salt. And so they're, that's the best that Twitter can do. And Facebook does it the same way. I know YouTube did it, especially around Corona. Um, they're, they're, they're doing their best to police it, but it's just this little like notice that pops up and then people just like ignore it. Right. So it's, it's a step in the right direction. And I'm very excited for those steps. Um, but I, I just feel like there's just so many people that are in other people's pockets that they don't want to rock the boat too much. And as users of the platform and citizens of this blue marble, it's going to, it's, it, if we don't hold them accountable, it can bite us in the ass. Well, I think we're finding that out uh, more and more through pretty much every, you know, it, it doesn't matter what you do in business. This has been things that have been being brought up to light is that a lot of people have been getting away with this kind of stuff for a long time. And, and even like you said, people that aren't checking sources and I don't need to, you know, expand 10 minutes on this, but I'll kind of summarize it for my viewers and, you know, in a vernacular that, you know, they'll get right. If you hear Joe Rogan talking about the Kraken on TikTok without his lips moving to the words, it's probably bullshit. Like, and I think this is one thing because, and I've noticed that, you know, and he was even talking about it on his podcast that he gets these clips of people sending him stuff where he's apparently, you know, they, they've soundboarded him and, you know, he's, he's putting together sentences and even yeah. so, you know, and, and uh, that was, you were shooting the shit with uh, Noble just before uh, you came on here too, right? AI and music, right? It gets to a mm -hmm. point yep. where. You, you you can sound like you have smoked a pack of cigarettes a day, but auto tune will in, in inevitably clear it up and, and, and make it make it presentable. Because like I said, yeah. I think as as a society we have learned to take what's already been processed other than looking at it raw and trying to figure out where it came from. But like I said, we can we can go through misquotes crappy sourcing it, you know until the cows it, it is, come home it's so interesting because the people that are putting up those fake ai voices i mean it's not easy no like there's a lot really of back end stuff yeah it's a lot of work to put all that stuff together like even that one that one website that was really popular for a while where you could just give it a prompt like uh, make a new Linkin Park song, but in the sound of Beethoven or something like okay. that, right? And it would come out and it would sound pretty darn good. But then like a, any good um, sound engineer or, or musician, they would take the stems and, and, and fix it up a little bit before reposting it onto their respective yeah. socials. Um, so let's just say for, for ballpark, we'll say like two, three hours worth of back end work for 30 seconds of a clip for thousands, if not potentially millions of people just taking it at face value. Yeah. And while that's both exciting and kind of fun, um, that's also kind of scary that people just accept it for, for what it is. And so kind of going back to um, what, what, uh, like what I do, is especially around like education is I try to do my best to um, give sources if I'm ever quoting sources, yeah. but also um, I, I try to do it in such a way that um, that it's open to pretty much anybody on any kind of level of expertise. Um, and 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 making it open and making it uh making it just that much more accessible so that's kind of i guess that's that's one of the things that i i i try to pride myself on is uh obviously the correct information or at least the information that i've experienced to to be correct yeah there have been some tiktoks where i've said something and um a lot of people in the comments are like, 
actually, no, that's not true. Not, and I will go look and then I'll have to make like an apology TikTok or like, okay, this is, they're right. This is, this is the correct, this is the correct way. The first way I told you, it only works on iPhone. Apparently it doesn't work on, on okay. Android. Here's my wife's Android. Here's how to do it on Android. Or sorry, Android, Android doesn't work. Go talk to Samsung or go talk to Google. It's not my fault. Yeah, or whatever the case is. So, yeah. <laughs> but you're okay with that, though. Like, that's the thing. I And I think where that can go into two different sections is those that can admit, you know, I was wrong. This is the correct answer. Thank you for correcting me. And then there's those that will fight tooth and nail just to not be proven wrong. And I think that, and, yeah. and that's the other thing, because I have seen that on TikTok. Too. Like, if you're getting into an argument with someone on your TikTok comments, it's probably just not worth it. Like, but, nope. No, there's people out there that live, live to argue. My father was one yeah. of them. I just, I just don't have the patience and, or the heart strength to do it anymore. So it's, uh, yeah. you know, I, I'd, I'd rather just spend my day being happy. We don't get, we don't get, it, and like we talked about, and you're, you're, you're the same with me on this. I can make all the money in the world, but I can't make more time. Do your best not right. to waste my time, please. So but that's it. But yeah. uh, seeing as that we've talked about all this technology, Tony, what got you into technology? What was the thing that, you know, what was that initial spark that, you know, Tony was like, I have to do this for the rest of my Like, this is what I want to do. Well, I think we got our first family computer back in. Yeah, it was it was definitely like 1992, I think. And it was a compact laptop it wasn't even a color screen yep. and it was running windows 3.1 yep. which is which is really weird now that i think about it because most of windows 3.1 did work on the color screen but i don't think ours was i have to i have to try to find some photos of it but it it, it just kind of it it amazed me all these things i was hearing of you know, even in, in grade two, hearing about hackers and hearing about this and that and people doing amazing things um, to other computers to beat the system. And this was before the Internet. Yeah. So that those the Internet term, email, you know, telnetting, uh, well, maybe telnetting was, but like those kinds of things just did not exist. But what really like struck a chord for me was back in the day when you used to buy those computer magazines, they would always give you a demo CD yeah. filled yep. with shareware and freeware for you to put on your computer for you to just try. And a lot of them were trial software that would run out in 30 days and then you would have to actually pay for it. But some of it was freeware and you could just keep on using it. And one of the freeware pieces of software that I found was... Um, and this was fast forward to 19, like 1997 was um, was this kind of roundabout like hacky gooey that let you fake outgoing AOL instant messenger messages to anybody and you can make it look like it's coming from anybody. Yeah. So I used to I used to play with my friends and pretend that I was the hot girl that they were trying to get with and then be like, ah, I tricked you. It's just me. And they would, they, they, they would be mad, obviously. Tony was the original then, catfish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, this, this is all my fault. My bad. But I would, I would do that. I, um, um, and then, and so it was, it was just very playful stuff. And then I kind of got into, we'll call them a, a, a bad crowd. They weren't a rough crowd, but they, they taught me a little bit of just very like, simple script kitty kind of stuff, just like copy paste this code and then you can hack this thing. And so I was able to hack my school's database to change my grade if I wanted to. Now I will say on camera, on mic and in everybody's view and earballs, I never changed my grade. I kept my C plus the way that it was because I didn't want the teachers to go back and say, that's not what I gave him. And I would get caught for all the other stuff, but I got in there. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. What else can I do? So that always stuck with me, the power of what you could do with just a few lines of code. And then my life um, was more focused on music. I, I primarily put a lot of my efforts into classical cello 
or the bass guitar or drums, um, singing with my band or performing with the orchestra. Like that was where my, my immediate passions were at the time. And the computer, the computer stuff at the time was more of a hobby and kind of a fun thing to do, but I never really thought this is a field that I want to get into. That wasn't really a, a thought until I got into college where, um, I actually did take computer science and I did learn proper coding and I did learn, you know, JavaScript. And I learned a little bit of COBOL because I'm old and weird. And I learned, you know, how, how to, how to do front end. I learned how to do a little bit of back end, and it was still a little bit, it was still a little bit beyond my grasp of being able to fully understand, um, some of the mathematics behind it, some of the, uh, just some of the commands and why commands are the way that they are. It's like, it literally is, was learning a whole new language and I was already struggling with learning French. So I, I, I took a backseat from it, but I was always like interested in like why, yeah, I was always interested in why a website is the way that it is and how to how to circumvent certain things that, that trouble you when you're just a regular internet user. And then, so I would just, you know, when people ask me questions, Hey, I, I get this pop-up. How do I get rid of this pop-up? Like, okay. So you just control shift escape. You, you go over here to the task manager. You might want to you know, drop down. And so I would, I would basically do the, you know, the offline tutorials for my friends and family. And I'm sure everybody in, in the, you know, everyone has that person in their family or in their group of friends, that that is the tech, that's the tech guy that, that I always go to. And so that's who I was for, for a while. And so fast forward to 2009 is when like, I really started watching YouTube and started watching YouTubers upload like actual like television shows in a way. And I thought I could, I could probably do this to a small degree, but I don't have the resources to do it. At the time, I didn't have money for a camera. I didn't have money um, for a powerful enough computer. And so I was like, okay, these are just dreams and I'm not, I'm not going to make them come true because I just can't afford to make them come true. And I was kind of bummed out about it, but at the same time, I was like, well, I don't know what I'm missing, so I'm not really worried about it. Uh, but my cousin... He was running a tech blog called Lazy Tech Guys. Okay. And during Thanksgiving one year, he said, hey, I know you're working at this tele, uh, telecommunications company. You know a lot about Android. We need, a, we need an, a, a writer to write about all the new stuff that's coming out with Android right now. Because Android is real hot. Yeah. And we don't have the manpower or the, um, the understanding of why Android's such a big key uh, pusher at this moment. And that's honestly something that I knew like front, center, left and right all about. Um, so I joined on as, um, as just as a, uh, as a contract writer. So I would just write an article once a week. I wouldn't get paid for it. It was just, honestly, it was just for the experience and then they got to go to CES one year and I had seen video and p p pictures from CES. And I was like, that is so cool. I mean, you guys are literally surrounded by the future. Like half of the stuff that you see at CES never comes to pass, but you at least got to see yeah. it in action. Yeah. That is so freaking cool. How, how do I get to do, go do that? And they're like, oh, wait, you want to go? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's, let, let's go next year. So I, I went the, I went the, the next year and then we kept on going years after that for about six, seven years. Um, we shot so much footage from CES that for the first like month and a half of our web, uh, of our, of uh, our YouTube channel at the time, lazy tech guys, it was all CES content for almost, almost a month and a half because we had so much stuff and, uh, if I, I don't know if you're familiar with the Alexa ranking on, um, yeah. So Amazon has this Alexa ranking. Google has a, has their page ranking as well too, but it gives you kind of an analytical stat 
to see how popular your content is okay. um, from the point of view of basically you're, you're, you're seeing how many people see your ads. That's how, that's okay. how you're, you're kind of being able to, 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 to maintain that. And we were not top 10, but we were definitely top 50 nice. for a good, like five months. And uh, I honestly, I don't know if we made any money, but I was like, okay, this is what I kind of want to keep on doing. And um, yeah, I just, I just kept at it. The rest of the boys went off and got their own other jobs. Then they went off and did their own other things. And I said, Hey, I can't write worth crap. I'm a terrible writer. Um, it's kind of why I love AI right now. Cause AI <laughs> helps me write a lot better. Um, but what I do really enjoy doing is the video stuff. I love creating video from nothing. I love taking a talking head and overlaying it with just stupid B-roll of me pretending to play a video game or of me skateboarding down um, down Main Street or something like that. That's that just me just talking about it right now. I I, I get excited. It's just the the creativity that I that I can muster with uh, video creation. Um, there's no end in sight. And so I just kept on doing that. And, um, and then it, it became one of those things that people were like, well, obviously you're, you're doing all these tech reviews. Maybe you also know how to help me with these computer questions, or you know how to help me with these other um, music software questions. Cause we had a music uh, music section. So all, all these things. And I, I was, I was able to kind of do my own kind of tutorials with that. And, and I was like, you know what? I love doing this, but I would also like to get paid to do this. It would be kind of nice. Um, and so, yeah, the the position that I have right now is pretty much that. So for lack of a better term, it, I literally have the dream job. The job that I've wanted for over 10 years, I, I was I was finally able to to get it. And yeah, it, it did. It did mean talking to the right people. It meant smooching with the with the right people, making sure that I I get noticed, making sure that um, I have a, enough opportunity and visibility and scope on their end. And um, it's uh, it, it's it's been a whirlwind, but I would definitely not change it for anything. Oh, that's awesome, man. And that gets rid of our next question of what the dream job is. So, uh, but no, I that sounds awesome, man, because. Yeah, you had me going there for a little second. I thought you were gonna tell me about Ilya, you know, how you wanted to be a journalist and go, but uh but no, but that explains the the path of Tony. And for those of you who watch my show, I generally like to gain perspective. So being able to see life uh or you know, uh, a professional career through the eyes of Tony and what makes him like doing what he does, I think is important. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and tech isn't for a bit, but if you can find that kind of passion in whatever you're doing, like you said, get paid for it. And make it a job right so and that's it's it. so it's it's so interesting because i was i was talking with my ex-wife one day and you know we're, we're cordial yeah. but um there was there was there was a moment where we were like you know like if i did if i never met you i wouldn't be where i am right now and i would probably not be as happy as i am now so with everything that you and i went through Good and bad. I am so grateful because A, because I met you, I met your cousin who got me into um, a tech website and a tech review channel, which effectively springboarded me to what I'm doing right now. I have an amazing daughter with you. And so as much as you and I do not click, I am so grateful to you. So thank you so much. And it was, it was a very... Very like it was a tough conversation to have, but I just I I just felt like, you know, this is this is my closure to you. Like, thank you for everything. I wish we could have left it off on better terms, but hey, you know what happened happened, and so let's move on and make the best of the future. And uh, thank you so much for everything. And truly, like it's, I I definitely wouldn't change anything because of all the BS that I had to go through with just living life and having to deal with the nose and having to deal with the challenges and all the roadblocks. It taught me how to be a stronger advocate for myself, but it also taught me kind of like what you said earlier, it taught me patience to not have to just argue my way out of things yeah. to know when to fall on my sword and know when to not fall on my sword. And that's something that, um, 
you know, when, when you talk to some, someone else that is a little bit younger than you and I, and they're continuously falling on their sword, it's like, okay, I hope you learn not to do that yeah. because it doesn't, it's not helping you. You're not making right. your point. You're, you just seem argumentative and then no one really kind of want to works with you or, or hang out with you. So I hope you grow from this and you realize that there, there are better options than always being right. And, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard because you have to really look inside yourself and realize like my, my ego means nothing. I shouldn't have an ego about this. That's it's stupid. To, it's so stupid for me to be this stubborn about this. So I'm just not going to be stubborn about it and just let things just flow and see what happens. And that's it. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's best to live less abrasively uh, than trying to constantly go against the the flow of life. But uh, very well said, Tony. That was uh, that was a great a great monologue there. So now that we've talked about the best job, you know what makes Tony happy? What is the worst job you've ever had? Oh, I I have two. Um, <laughs> Don't hold back. Buddy. So. One, one job, my, my, my worst, like worst, um, I, I'd say this is the worst job I had. Isn't really the worst job. I worked at a toy store, which at, at face value sounds like a great place to work, especially for the sheer fact that I worked in a toy store during the time that eBay reselling was a big oh. hit. And so I would get all the Barbies and all the Hot Wheels at cost and then resell them for profit on eBay. And it was great. And I was making, you know, whatever it is I was making, it was nice extra ch change. But what, what made it the worst was that it was a toy store and tiny little grubby kids come in with a uh, snot running down their nose. Yeah. They knock everything off the shelf and then their entitled parents say, well, that's okay. He'll clean it up. Pointing at me. I'm like, you, you know what's great is values. That's what you should teach your child right now. But I can't say that. Nope. I have to stand there in my in my red polo and say thank you very much. I will. I will. I, I'll just stand here and wait for you to get, for you two to be done demolishing this end cap that took me nearly half a day to to create, um, according to the uh, MLN. So thank you, but. <laughs> You can leave now, maybe? No? Oh, you're not even buying anything. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay, cool. They we're just kicking cool. tires today, buddy. Just kicking tires today. Keeping so, you employed. Like anytime <laughs> my daughter and I go into a store, especially when she was younger, like she would she would pull a, a stuffed animal or she would pull, you know, um a doll or something like that off the shelf just so she could like be appeased in the store. And then we'd be done. Okay. But I was very vehemently like strict on okay are we done with mr bear let's go put mr bear back we would walk all the way back to the toy aisle and put mr bear back because i'm like these these kids are underpaid and they don't care about their jobs and honestly i would like to make their job just a little bit better because i know how it feels so if anything we're getting more steps in i mean sometimes we we couldn't do it because we were in a rush obviously but more times than not we, we would walk all the way back to the toy section to put it back. So work, working at the toy store, definitely, um, I, I wouldn't say it, it taught me patience because I was too young to understand patience. It, uh, but it taught me to how to keep my mouth shut because I would, I would um, have interactions with, with um, parents like that very often. And I go into the back room. There wasn't a back room. It was just a closet. But I go into the closet and kind of like scream into the wall. It's like, this is just, this is insane. Like how, how are you, what, what are you, what are you teaching your kid? What kind of parent? Like I, I was just ha have all these like things that I would say that, um, you know, made me feel better. Uh, but still, it just, it would not be a position like if I was look if I were looking for a seasonal job, I feel so bad for seasonal hires because they get treated so poorly, oh, they get paid so poorly. But at the same time, it's like I get it; it's, it's just seasonal. You're only going to be there for a little bit, so I guess fine. But the other job where it was like the worst job was my like my very first like proper office job. I was a receptionist for a law office, law firm, 
in downtown San Francisco. Uh, and I was supposed to be a receptionist for a week because their receptionist was going on vacation. And so there were, I want to say like 15 different lawyers. And it was a very high class looking. Have you ever seen the, the show Suits? Yeah, yeah. Did you know those offices? Yeah. It looked like that. It looked like that to a T. Beautiful views, beautiful offices, glass seal, you know, glass windows, ceiling to floor, just everything. Even the, even the lift, the elevator was gorgeous. But the reason why it was so, it was the worst job was because the training I got for the job was, yeah, you answer the phone by hitting that button and then you get the mail and then everyone's name is on the door. I'm like, yeah, but the mail doesn't always have the name on it. Like, yeah, well, you just have to know. How am I supposed to know? <laughs> You're not telling me anything. And so it was, there, there was like very little training for the job. And quite honestly, like my mindset was not there. <laughs> my, mind, my mindset. So like when I, uh, the first day I went for the job orientation, if you will, I brought my best friend with me to uh, kind of keep me company. Um, because after the orientation, because orientation was only like a half an hour. Okay. So it's, so he and I were going to go walk around uh, San Francisco for a little bit. So during the orientation, I was kind of like, okay, what are we going to do in San Francisco? We can, we can go to the strip club. We can go to Macy's. We go eat at the, the cheesecake factory. Like my mind was, was not there. So it probably was my fault. They probably told me a bunch of stuff that I didn't listen to. So I'll, I'll give you that. But the actual like, so I, I didn't have anything. So the actual first day was just like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. I, what's your name? Do you, where, do you have a name tag? You don't have a name tag. What's your name? I'm so sorry. Um, and it was, it was like that at all. Every, every, uh, barrister, every, um, lawyer that I came, uh, came in contact with, they were very nice. I will well, tell, I, I will say that they were very nice. No one gave me any kind of like, no one gave me any kind of crap, but what just made it the worst job was I, I didn't have any direction. So yes, probably was my fault that I didn't hear everything. But if I say I don't know what to do, that I'm hoping there's someone else to tell me what to do, and there really wasn't. And so I, I told the temp agency because it was through a temp agency, like, hey, I'm not going back tomorrow. Like honestly, <laughs> you don't even have to pay me. Yeah. You don't even have to pay me. I, I feel bad. Like I, I was barely paying attention on, on, on the orientation. Um, I pretty much knew how to get to the office, where to park. And that was kind of it. Everything else, like some of it seeped in, but most of it did not. And it would take probably another week for, for everything to actually finally click. And by that time, the main guy's back. So I don't think you want me. You want someone with actual reception, experience. like receptionist experience. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I just like how fast you went from the strip club to cheesecake factory there, but, uh, well, you know, priorities, you well, go strip club and you get hungry. You gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go cheesecake factory. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. All right. So let's sum up the professional side of this. If, if you could give our viewers and listeners, you know, three to five tips, right? Like what are, what are Tony's five tips for career success? Like things that you've learned over time. Like you said, we don't fall on our sword. Um, you mm -hmm. know, just kind of build on that. If you had to give us five well, good tips. Well, first off, I, I do, I'm very, very passionate about what I do and it irritates me how many people and I, and I realize it's not easy for everybody, but it, it, it saddens me how many people are in a, in a lifetime career in a position that they're not passionate about. They're spending over eight hours a day on something that they hate, and that just kills me inside. And so if you have the ability, get into a field. It doesn't have to be the exact job, but at least get into the field that you want to be in. This will give you the opportunity to start making connections and networking with people that you may be able to, you know, have actual conversations with and start collaborating with those people. And so definitely I feel like if you can't have a professional career in your passion, don't ever let go of that passion. Let your passion drive you to at least get your eight hours done 
so you have something exciting to look forward to when you get home. That's that's that I would say that's the one thing because as long as you're here on on earth for for however many years um I hope every single one that's listening or watching by the end when when uh when when that time comes you can at least say hey I enjoyed stamp collecting or I enjoyed rock skipping. Yeah. Don't care. I really don't care what your passion is. I'm not here to poo-poo or tell you that it's great or terrible. You love it. It's not hurting anyone. That's all I care about. Just that's be passionate cool. about something. Fair enough. Yeah. That's 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 one thing I I I would recommend because there's I was asking uh, a group of people, a group of a group of kids actually like what are you passionate about? And and obviously, you know, video games and this and that. But there was one girl. She's like, I'm really passionate about horseback riding. Okay. And I said, okay, keep doing that. Like, I realize that's probably a very expensive hobby for you and your parents. But please do not lose that. Because I can tell you, as someone who gave up on his passion uh, in college, because I stopped playing music for about 20 years, I'm back now playing music and I'm kicking myself for quitting, but I'm so glad that I'm back. And so like, if I had those 20 years still playing music, I don't know where I would be, but it, it would make me that much more happier than I already am. And so um, if, if you have the capability to just follow that and, and keep hold and never let go of that passion, do that. And even if your passion changes, let it change. Yeah. Like I said, mine was music and then it moved over to what I'm doing right now. And now I'm able to merge both music and what I'm doing right now. And it's, and it's really, really nice. The other thing I would say is um, learn. Yeah. Kind of like what we said before is, is learn to be patient, learn to l learn to be able to uh, understand personal growth and, and, and figure out like, the kind of criticism that you are getting from yourself and, and other people, the, the kind of criticism that you want to look for is the type that actually supports you. And that starts with your own internal monologue. If you're like, oh, I'm terrible at video making or I'm terrible at, at cooking an egg or I'm terrible at this. Great. Go figure it out. Go just go figure it out. You, you have, the information at your beck and call, we were just talking about it. You can ask AI how to cook an omelet. <laughs> All right. Or you can just go to foodnetwork.com and figure it out. Right. I don't care, but you could, you could do it. What, what, what's the problem that's holding a lot of people back is the, the fear of making the mistakes, uh, the fear of messing up, the fear of letting other people down nine times out of 10, the only person that you're going to let down is yourself. And so if if you can at least set the expectation of, hey, I'm learning and I'm not going to make this omelet the greatest omelet in the world the first time. It might even taste soapy for some strange reason, but at least I'm doing it. And I can at least, you know, try again because you can make multiple omelets. It's okay. Right. They sell <laughs> them know? in a dozen. You, you, you got, you, they you, do. You got some time. You got some time. I have, they sell them in 24 packs. Or if oh, you go to Costco, you get yep. 70 omelets if you want, for some reason, yeah. you could op open up your omelet station for the neighborhood. But, but yeah, don't, I mean, with, with, um, with the lack of knowledge, it is scary, but there, the only thing really holding you back is is the effort from yourself to 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 be able to say i'm going to i'm going to embrace the failure that's it you just have to embrace the failure and learn from that failure and be excited about the failure because the the biggest fail is just not trying because you don't think you're good enough but at least if you tried you might not hear people say, well, thanks, at least, at least you try. That's, but it's not about what other people say. It's about what you say to yourself. So at least you can tell yourself, I got through step one. Now let's check out what step two is, whatever, whatever that is in, 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 your, in, in your proverbial like, an analogy to this. And I'd, and I'd, say, I'd say the last thing, really, in, in terms of um, like, professionalism, but also at least the things that pertain to the kind of uh, job that I'm in right now, be a sponge, 
be willing to learn new things. You don't necessarily have to try new things, but it's always good. It's always good to be aware of the, uh, of the new things. It's always good to, to know what, uh, what's on the horizon because you never know when you might start incorporating that new thing into your workflow. Like for example, I was extremely, I mean, I used to make fun of TikTok and TikTokers like left and right. Like, oh my God, all these stupid <laughs> little girls dancing and, and, and lip syncing. And then, you know, then, you know, you'd see like King Botch or you'd see Zach, Zach King or, or some of the other Viners create some TikToks. Like, okay, this is, this is kind of interesting, but it's still TikTok. It's still, it's still stupid. And it was just me. It was just my own opinion being placed on a platform that I hadn't even tried. It was just my opinion that I drew from the other people's opinion around me. And, it, you know, and I was like, you know what? One day, one day I said to myself, you know what? Uh, the other people around me are not content creators, but they're very, uh, they're very opinionated about TikTok and how stupid it is. But they're also not going after the same thing that I am going after. And it looks like everyone's going after TikTok. And so I might not like TikTok. And I still don't like TikTok, but I'm understanding TikTok and I see the power of TikTok. And so if I can at least use that power for good, then I'm happy with it. No, that's very well said, my friend. Very well said. So let's now that we've you know spent an hour talking about professionalism, let's move on to some personal questions here, Tony. Um, yeah. You are a man with a lot of hobbies, right? You guys do karaoke night. Um, you know, I, whatever I see, you're playing a different kind of video game. I've seen you once, you know, you're a hot dog. You're, you're, you're interviewing people. Yes. <laughs> How do you, I'm a hot dog interviewing people. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You, you've done it all, man. Like there's very few, but not only that, even when I first met you, like I, 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 I thought at one point you might've been the voice of the San Francisco giants. Like, you know, <laughs> You've just got that that voice for radio, but um, but let's talk about it. So you recently got married to uh, Aurelia, your wife. Um, you know, hi Aurelia. Um, how's married life been treating you, man? I know what's been what. You're getting close to a year now. It's been about six months. We got married in July, okay. and uh, it's it's been phenomenal. I mean, um, you know, and, and it's 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 interesting, right? Because the first my, my first marriage. Uh, the, the months after we got married, it was, we obviously still loved each other, but it, it wasn't like we, we weren't in the honeymoon stage anymore. We had the honeymoon, but we weren't in a honeymoon stage. We're like, Hey, we got married. All right. Back to normal life. And at the time we, we had our own responsibilities and stuff like that. So I get it. Um, but now, like with Aurelia and I, we're still like, we're 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 still on cloud nine. Like I'm just, I, I messaged her earlier today at at uh, one thirty my time. Is that I just told her like randomly, I'm just so happy being being yours. And she just messaged me back right now. Like I love being yours. Like having those messages randomly, I never had a relationship like that. Not even yeah. in high school where there was like puppy love. Yeah. Like it was just, you know. And so like I've. She for me is literally one in, one in a billion, if not more, to which that it, it, it is so serendipitous how how we were able to find each other, and it's just so funny because we literally lived maybe twenty minutes away from each other, not knowing each other even existed. I swear to God, I had seen her before in a Costco. She says she never walked in the Costco even though her mother does have a Costco account, but that's a different story. Um, but yeah, I just, I, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's been great. The, the, the funny thing is, and as, as I'm sure, you know, it's easy being the male, uh, uh, uh part of a, a, a monogamous, um, yeah. hetero c a couple, because we ain't got to do shit when it comes to our name change or anything. Cause most of the time we don't do that. That's the ladies. Um, decision if they want to change the name and i don't know how it is up there in canada but uh aurelia was given so many like curveballs to change yep. her name she had been working on it since 
August and everything finally went through the end of December. And so it was one of those like, okay, now we, uh, at least according to the government, we are finally married. Yeah, we, we, and the, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, there's, there's obviously a few other things that she needs to change, like credit cards and stuff like that. But at least for a driver's license and with the state of Utah and the United States sees her as she, she now finally has uh, the same shared last name as I do. And that's just been like, oh, there's nothing that I could do. I was, I was just waiting yeah. in the wings and trying to help her and, there, there are definitely times where I'm like, hey, let's just go outside and take a walk. Don't worry about that. Just leave the computer. We'll, we'll deal with it. Computer's being stupid. Grr, whatever. Let's go outside, take a walk. Let's, let's take the dogs out and throw the B-A-L-L around. I have to spell it out because they're right yeah, there. They'll get excited. Fair, that's fair. But uh, yeah, married life's been been phenomenal. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I know, uh, I know me and Tracy, well, Tracy's the one having to deal with the name change, but yeah, that's it. Like, uh, we're still... We're still going, so whenever I go to the uh, the pharmacy or the or to the post office, I, I ask. I don't know which one of my wife's is if it was pre marriage or after marriage, but if she's got a package here, I'll take it with me. But it, but it's stuff like it. But I but I'm I'm assuming it's pretty close to the same uh, same process. And the other thing with Canada is you can only do it once, so you better damn well pick oh. the right per yeah. So yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So just wow, that, right in there. But uh, so you, go ahead. So after after you do it that one time, you might as well go and get that tattoo because you can't change it. <laughs> you might as well right across all the time. <laughs> just right there, yeah. or just in the uh, in the inner oh. lip, right there. <laughs> yeah. She she would do that. Go want across. To bring that up because she would. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and we were talking about your hobbies. But you're you're like I said, you, you got a lot of hobbies, man. Every time I see you, you're doing something else. Um, there's always a different track playing on, on the album of Tony. And, and and that's one thing I love whenever I pop into your streams. But how do you manage all this, man? I know you travel a lot for work. Like, yeah. how do you get yourself prepped for, you know, for fun and, like, work and play? Like, because it, it seems to be pretty, you know, I imagine you live by an itinerary that I have completely just blown up for you today. So... <laughs> no, a hundred percent. Like my life is um one thousand percent an itinerary. My my friend yesterday even joked that I probably have my bathroom breaks or bio breaks scheduled in my calendar. I don't, but I kind of could because just the way that I've cult cultivated my workflow, my body, it just kind of, you know, it just kind of happens when it, when it happens pretty much around the same time of day every single day. <laughs> and so when it, when it when it comes to to those kind of things that don't matter and my body can schedule that out, even waking up, I wake up before my alarm yeah. now, which I never thought I would be able to do. But I, I wake up at six o'clock now. I'm like, all right, I'm up and I'll get ready to go. And now that I'm up, I might as well go to the gym. So I'll go to the gym. But um, with with all the different hobbies, um, I try not to overbear myself because the problem is that um, I get really drawn in by the hobby and then that hobby becomes my life. And what I want to prevent is that exact fact. I want to enjoy skiing just as that. I don't want to be a skier. Yeah. I just want to be a guy that goes skiing once or twice a year. That's all I want to do. And the same thing with um, like, uh, like karaoke. I, I don't want to be a, a lounge singer. I don't want to be even known as a singer. I just want to be a guy that does karaoke once or twice a month with uh, in person or on a discord server. That's that, that's it. But, um, but scheduling everything out, at least the main, like most important bullet things. Um, so I can at least see what my day is, if not my whole week, that gives me the ability to pause and say, okay, this is where most of my energy is going to go. And in order for me to recoup some of that energy that's lost, um, I'm going to go do something that is extremely fun around four o'clock today. So today, for example, after our conversation at four o'clock Mountain Standard Time, I'm going to go grab my cello and play some Metallica for about a half an hour because I've got a Metallica book booklet to play um, a bunch of their songs from the Black Album and Master of Puppets. Nice. So that's what I'm, you know, and, and so... The and and the big thing too is having an open conversation with my wife about 
like gaming, playing with friends. Um, one time I was in a Discord call where we were watching um, an anime, uh, Demon Slayer. Okay. And it was actually an episode that she had not seen yet. And so she was a little bit upset that I was watching this episode with these, from her purview, random people. And I wasn't watching with her. And so I, and I, so I, I took her input and the way that she told it to me was probably the best way was that I wish I could have watched that with you, but I'm glad you had fun. She didn't put me down. She didn't put the discord server down. She didn't, she didn't say like, I, I bet you went in there cause there's a bunch of cute girls and that she didn't say that, which is what my ex-wife would have said. Um, you know, and so she, she just said how she felt, but she knew that it did bring me joy to, uh, interact with these other online people, but it gave me the ability to, um, to, to process and also to prioritize what, what, what's more important, random people on the internet that I do connect with yeah. or this person that I've pledged the rest of my life to. And so with that in mind, where, where is the balance? So I I've told her like, okay, there are going to be some nights where I'm up late playing games or watching movies with these random people. But with that in mind, uh, there are going to be some, some other days or nights that I don't even after work, I won't even touch the computer and being able to be flexible with that and, um, have her join me with some of the hobbies that I'm doing or give me some input or suggestions of hobbies to do. That's how I'm able to kind of keep on going and just try new things. If, if it's fiscally possible for me to just go and just try it out. Oh, that's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, I uh, I definitely know. And I was going to say, you know, she did change her name on everything for you. The least you could do I is know. Live, right? <laughs> I like, know. The least I could do. <laughs> I got you, really. <laughs> no, but, uh, but that's awesome. And now, Tony, I've got one last, well, two last questions, but this is a big one because I was joking with Noble about this. We were trying to figure out what's Tony's worst habit. Oh, vaping. That's that, that's hands that's down. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a lot more this, complex. This than stupid that. thing. No, that, no, that's it, it. It, it, it's, it's a hundred percent vaping. I mean, I'll pick my nose every once in a while, but that's because, you know, compared that, to the vaping, it, it is it's what not it is. a big deal. <laughs> it's not a big deal, but you know, compared to the vaping, I mean, this is, this, this is something, I mean, I've been smoking cigarettes since I was uh, 12, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, with the advent of vaping, it was one of those things that it was supposed to wean me off just smoking in general. It did the exact opposite yeah. because then it became a whole cultural normative um, in the Bay Area there. Uh, and I'm sure you've seen these up there in Canada, but they're the, the vape mods that were made out of wood yeah, yeah, yeah. were very beautifully. I mean, they're, they're freaking works of art. You just happen to smoke out of it or whatever you want, you know? And so like that was, I mean, I even had a YouTube channel called Lazy Tony Vapes where I would, I would review different flavors. I would review uh, different coil, um, um, different coils, different mods, different this. And I'm like almost everything under the sun. I've been to three different vape conventions when they were going off. Yeah, it was, it, it was, it was a lot of fun. And like, uh, it fed my ego so well because I would go to a convention and people would want to take photos with me and stuff like that. It was, it was cool, but vaping is not good. Like we, we know it's, I, we don't even know if it's better than cigarettes, but we, we know it's, it is something of, of concern. And the nice thing I would, I would argue is here in Utah, they finally passed the law that in a few days of recording right now, March, uh, March, February 20th, uh, 21st, uh, flavored vapes are going away. It's supposed to happen any day now. So if you do want to vape, it's either going to be like a tobacco flavor or a menthol flavor. And I can tell you from my experience with mentholated vape, I, I'm not a fan of mentholated vape and I hate the taste of tobacco. So there's a high probability that I'm going to kind of be forced to quit, which puts $30 a week back into my wallet, which is kind of nice. That's good. You know, so, I mean, that alone, you times that by 52 years or 52 <laughs> weeks out of the year. 
like uh, that's that that you know add that adds up very very nicely. I I'm, I will say I will probably I told Aurelia this too. I will probably buy it just to see if 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 I like it or or not. But uh, knowing how I am, I just I don't know if it's something that I would would continue. So as much as this is a bad habit for me, I I do feel like the powers of be are making it a little bit harder for me to enjoy it which would then make me allowed to live a little bit longer yeah. and not have a hand hand to mouth uh habit anymore but uh, until then hello <laughs> no no do you do your thing brother no i uh and that's it i smoked for 22 years and i'm actually what 15 14 or 15 weeks out now but that was the thing and i did the same thing as someone who smoked very heavily who has done a lot of things that probably shouldn't have been put into the body. Vaping is definitely one of the things I can say that I have never had to stop on the side of the road. Puke and almost had a heart attack because I had too much yeah. because a 16 year old yeah. was selling me cartridges of the 20 mil told me, yeah, this is the strongest we had. I packed back two tanks when I was combining there. I uh, couldn't make it home. I had to call the wife and the and the best friend to come and pick me up off the side of the road because I thought yep. I was dead. And that is that dying. And yep. that is nicotine poisoning, ladies and gentlemen. So yes. if you've had that, give her a break. But I have never wanted to quit smoking more in my life, and that's it. But no, I've got uh, nothing but faith. And as someone as good as you, you're allowed to have some kind. Of, it, it keeps you normal. It, it's good for you. You know, if you couldn't have the strippers, the cheesecake, I'm glad you got your va uh, your vaping, my friend. But I really want to thank you for your time, Tony. I know you're a busy guy, and I really want to thank you for uh, taking the time out of your day. Of course, man. Yeah. To, to redo thank this you. with me. So in the spare, I want to give you your self promo time. Tony, where can we find you? How can we find you? Tell the people. Lazy tech, Tony, uh, pretty much across the board of all the socials, um, Twitch on YouTube. It's lazy tech TV. That's the channel. Uh, and, um, other than that, you can find me. If you join Corgi's discord, I'll be in there too. Yeah. Corgi discord. He's in the pack discord, the OGs discord and i'm sure there's another one there but as always buddy you are a great supporter of all communities and i can't thank you enough for just being you tony so uh to everybody that tuned in uh who watched us we will be having this will be live on or sorry uh this will be uploaded to youtube and to spotify and we thank you all for listening and if you are following us on any social media be sure to hit that like subscribe Tell us what we did great. Tell us how we can be better. We're always looking to improve. And again, big shout out to my guest, Lazy Tech Tony. We'll put the links in in the description and uh, go check them out. And like I said, if you're tired of describing or helping people with their technical issues, just tag them in Tony's. All right, guys, have yourself a great day. Tony, again, thank you so much for doing this with me, buddy. Thank we'll you. talk again soon, man.